Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be solving an indefinite integral, the indefinite integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 squared dx. The only thing is I completely forgot how to use trig sub, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to use that method. It's definitely the main method to uh, solve the integral. Um, if you haven't done it before I would suggest go ahead and do it right now before we jump into the two other methods that we're going to use in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So this first method that we're going to use is something that I think is pretty interesting. Usually when we have some rational function and we want to integrate it, all we have to do is split it up into um, split it up into a bunch of quadratic or linear expressions in the bottom and then you know completely factor it and then use partial fractions and then integrate directly. So that's what we want to do in this case. However, we can't split it up into partial fractions when two of the factors are exactly the same, when we have x squared plus 1 and x squared plus 1 again. But what we can do is we can arbitrarily take the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 times x squared plus a squared dx. And then we can set a equal to 1. And that should work. The only problem is, of course, in this situation, as you can imagine, we're going to end up with um, an indeterminate form, so we're instead going to take the limit as a goes to 1. So let's go ahead and do partial fractions. So this is going to be, um, I'm just going to solve the integral first, and then I'll take the limit as a goes to 1. So we're going to have integral of ax plus b over x squared plus 1 plus cx plus d over x squared plus a squared dx. Now we're going to go ahead and make a system of equations. Uh, so when we multiply this out, if we look at the x cubed terms, that's going to be equal to a plus c, and that's going to be equal to 0. If we look at the x squared terms, that's going to be b plus d, and that's also going to be equal to 0. If we look at the x terms, that's going to be a squared a plus d, and that's going to be 0. Or, sorry. Um, not plus d plus c. And using this equation and this equation, we can see that a and c are both going to be 0. And then if we look at the constant terms, we see that a squared b plus d equals 1. So if we go ahead and subtract this equation from this equation, we're going to get that a squared minus 1 b equals 1 which means that b equals 1 over a squared, a squared minus 1, and d is going to equal negative 1 over a squared minus 1. So using this, we can go ahead and integrate. So when we integrate, we're just going to end up with 1 over a squared minus 1 inverse tangent of x minus 1 over a inverse tangent of x over a. And of course we can have a plus c, but that's not really going to end up mattering uh, since that plus c is going to be there one way or another. Now we just have to take all of this limit as a goes to 1. So as you can see, this inside is just going to be 0 since that a goes to 1. This just becomes our tangent x. And we're also going to have a 0 on the bottom here because of this a squared minus 1. So all we have to do is differentiate with respect to a on the top and bottom. So this term is going to disappear, and we're just going to end up with 1 over a squared inverse tangent of x over a plus 1 over a cubed 1 over x over a all squared plus 1 all over the derivative of a squared minus 1, which is just 2a. This is a limit as a goes to 1. And we no longer have an indeterminate form, so we can just go ahead and plug in a equals 1. And we're going to get inverse tangent of x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Oh, can't forget the chain rule here, uh, since we have that x over a. So we're going to have plus x over x squared plus 1 all over 2 plus c. And that's our answer. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the complex number method. 
So in this case, we're going to be doing partial fractions on this setup. And um, so yeah, we're just going to use complex numbers and, and partial fractions. I'm going to note here that it's pretty, pretty easy to show that inverse tangent of x equals 1 over 2i ln of i minus x over i plus x. Um, and that will give you inverse tangent, and that's the definition that's often used for inverse tangent. There's another definition that's used that's to define it over the whole complex plane, but this works for real numbers at least. So this is what we're going to be using to define inverse tangent. So let's go ahead and do our partial fractions. If we factor the bottom, we find this just x minus i squared times x plus i squared. So we're going to get the integral of a over x minus i squared plus b over x plus i squared. And these we can solve for using the cover up method plus c over x minus i plus d over x plus i dx. Uh, for that first term, a and b, we can just go ahead and use the cover up method. And so these are both going to e be equal to negative 1 fourth. And immediately, if we consider the x cubed terms in the overall answer, or um, we can see that c and d are going to be opposites, so c equals negative d. And if we go ahead and find some other point here to reference, let's see, we can look at we can look at the constant terms. We can see that i times c minus i times d. plus one half is going to equal one. And so we can see that IC minus ID equals one half. And then, uh, so this means that C minus D equals negative I over two. And we know that C plus D equals zero. So we can go ahead and solve. C is going to be negative I over four and D is going to be I over four. I believe that should make sense, yes. And so, when we go ahead and integrate this, we're going to get 1 fourth 1 over x minus i plus 1 fourth over x plus i minus i over 4 ln x minus i plus i over 4 ln i plus x. And don't forget the plus C, of course. So if we go ahead and combine these first two, just multiplying out, we're going to see that the uh, constant terms cancel and we'll just end up with two X terms. So that's just going to be one half X over X squared plus one. Then we're going to be have plus one half uh, I over two natural logarithm of I plus X over I minus X. We can sort of reorganize this to be 1 over 2i, and then we can flip this over. We're going to have i minus x over i plus x. So we're just going to have 1 half arctangent of x. And I just want to let you guys know that I sort of flipped this from um, ln x minus i to x, mi x plus i, or i minus x, and I just want to say that that's completely justified because uh, ln x minus i equals i pi plus ln i minus x for certain values of x and i, and when we're talking about real numbers, this is going to hold out to be true, um, and this i pi is covered by our plus c, so we don't have to worry about that extra constant. And this is going to be our solution once again. So once again, more proof that we don't need trig sub to solve uh, our integrals. Trig sub is not that OP, though honestly, it is definitely the fastest and easiest method. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think it was uh, a pretty good one, pretty straightforward. And yeah, something that you guys should enjoy. So yeah, enjoy the video. And I hope to see you next time.